Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We are so happy to be with you again today. This is Sunday. March the 21st, 2021 in the year of our Lord. Just checking, making sure we're all on the same page. Also, it's the first day of spring. Hey, hey give yeah. me five. Yes, and I can hear the birds singing louder than ever. It's just such a wonderful thing that we all look forward to is to see coming through the dark winter into the beauty of spring. And we pray that it's starting to happen around the world. It is so good to be with you. And I see you coming on. Hi, Paul. Hi, Vinod. Nice to see you. Everyone tell us where you're from. Hello, Gil Roy, I think it was. Um, we are here in Carlsbad, California, where uh, Pastor Don and I lead, he's the senior pastor, uh, Hidden Life Ministries. Don's been a senior pastor for how many 42 years? 42 years. 42 years. And I'm a spiritual director both here and for the Zig Ziglar community around the world. And it is our privilege um, really great privilege to represent the spiritual spoke of the wheel that Mr. Ziegler talked about. He was a Christ follower, as are we. However, everyone, every nation, every tribe, and Mr. Ziegler would want that too, around the world is welcome in this space. We invite you to listen, to decide if, if perhaps you might want to become a Christ follower or um, or grow more deeply in your roots with God. So we are happy to see you. I see you. Hi. I see Neaters and Mark watching. Yeah, Love you too. Hope yeah. to see you later. And David, I see David. Hello. And Mary. Hello, Mary Jane and John. Yes. So it's so good to see. We have a chapel family that meets here and we'll be having live chapel at 1030 today in our sacred garden. But for now, let's begin. Um, let's begin by prayer and supplication. If you would just join us in lifting your palms. Hello, Roberta. Uh, lifting your palms as a statement of surrender. Holy Father, we give you all the glory. We thank you that you have welcomed us as we welcome others. Oh, come. Oh, come, Father. Come invade our space. Hmm. Open our eyes to see you and our ears to hear you. Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Awaken us to be alive to you, to know the life that is true life. <coughs> We pray that you would comfort those who are struggling in any way, body, mind, or soul. We pray for those who, who ha are um, dealing with disease. Lord, would you bring your peace, Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace, in, in, enliven and strengthen and heal by the power of your beautiful peace so that there would not be dis-ease, there would be ease in the mind, in the body, and in the soul. For the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside quiet waters. He restores our soul. He guides us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table <coughs> for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our Good Shepherd, for bringing us into the presence of Abba, Father, on the basis of what you did for us on the cross. Thank you that we can hide under the, under the cross, <laughs> that you can cover our sins with your blood. Thank you for the supreme sacrifice. We pray in the name of the Father, Father. and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 
Hmm. And amen. Yes. So, friends, it is um, another Sunday to delve into the Word of God. It is such a privilege that we can do this. Never take it for granted. We don't. Um, we, there are people around the world who cannot freely meet together in the name of Christ and study His Word. And we, we, we have great compassion and pray for God's covering over those people. And we pray that everyone, all of us, would be not take the Word of God for granted, but listen deeply. And yes. speaking of that, we have been uh, in the parables for 30-some weeks. And as we come to this week, and next week will be our last two weeks on the parables. Mm. And then we come to Easter Sunday. Mm. Uh, this one is probably the most well-known parable, the Good Samaritan. But I think if you understand more and more, a text without a context is a pretext. Mm. And if you understand truly what Jesus, his intention, his teaching, his instruction, and his compelling call, mm. uh, I believe it'll be more and more of an inspiration to, to you as well as to us. Absolutely. We keep learning, and we hope you keep learning as well. So turn with us in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 25 and go through 37. So if you don't have a Bible, certainly listen um, to these words from Jesus, from the Word. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you shall live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Well, okay, powerful. Um, as usual, the Word of God, if you study it deeply and see um, all that is um, around, it, around what is said, um, you learn more. Um, at first glance, this parable might appear to be a works righteousness, that all we need to do is take care of our neighbors, um, care for the poor and the sick and the, and the oppressed, and we will inherit the kingdom of God. At first glance, that's what this looks like. However, um, and, and by the way, let me just say this, there, there, the question that prompted um, the parable also makes you think that because the lawyer stood up to test him. Notice the word test. He's examining 
Jesus. And the lawyer, by the way, is not like a courtroom lawyer. It's, um, it's an expert of the law. He's a scribe. He's a scribe. And he, he knows the word of God up and down and all around. <laughs> he knows his Bible, his, his Torah. And um, so he's just, he's, and it's very possible that his question was very genuine. Um, we don't know the man's heart, only God does. However, um, something is revealed um, when it says, he sought to justify himself. Big clue. Um, I, I noticed right off the bat that there are two different times that the words are very similar. At, when Jesus asked him, what does the law say? He said, he, he quoted rightly, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, do this and you will live. And so it could have ended right there. Oh, definitely. The whole conversation could have ended right there. The man could have said, wow, just what I thought. Mm -hmm. And sat back down. Next, <laughs> next question. That's, that's the clue right there. That's what you need to really notice right there. But I there. think he, the second question is that he was looking for a loophole. He was, and that's why he says he was seeking to justify himself. There's, our, there's some very important information. And so he drills down deeper, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so, hmm, who exactly is my neighbor? Very important. <laughs> um, let me just say, we're going to go into this more. Pastor Don has a lot to say as well. I'm just going to say, if I were to boil this down into three words, I'm going to say three, three things, just not even sentences. Three words. Humility. Worship and compassion. Three words. This, um, among many other things, deals with humility, worship, and true compassion. I'm going to read to you from the message. I think that uh, Eugene Peterson, uh, in some of these uh, sections of scripture, it, it just is breathtaking. This, this is one that I, I find was very memorable. This is from uh, uh, Luke 10, 25 through 37. Just then, okay, and, and you need to understand when you hear those two words, things were going along fine, all right? And then Luke writes, just then, all right? Uh, around the corner, yeah. okay? Uh-oh, here, here it comes. It comes. <laughs> just then, a religious scholar, as we've talked about, a lawyer, stood up with a question to test Jesus. Teacher, what do I need to do to get eternal life? Mm -hmm. We talked about the uh, title for our section, our teaching here in Luke 10. It's a stunning reversal. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is that Jesus plays along with the lawyer. He knows he's got the legal expertise and he's going to try. He knows exactly what's going on here. And he, Jesus answered, what's written in God's law? How do you interpret it? If he was a, uh, a very devout scribe, lawyer, he would have had what's called a phylactery. Phylacteries were worn by the religious, the Orthodox Jews, around their wrists. There were little leather boxes, okay, usually around the, the, the left wrist. And inside of it contained the passages of scriptures, Exodus 13, 1 to 10, 11 through 16. Well, so you should say <laughs> Exodus 13, 1 to 16. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9 and 11, and then 13 through 20. And then um, um, Leviticus 19, 18, which talks about loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 6 talks about loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so to, for him, what he was saying in a way, it's not here in the text, whether it's the message or ESV or NLT, but what Jesus is saying, his response, he says, what do I need to do to get eternal life? Jesus translated was saying, well, look at your wrist. <laughs> look at the phylacteries. Mm. Look at the scriptures. Mm. There's Leviticus 19. There's Deuteronomy 6. There's Exodus 13. Look at your wrist. Okay? 
and what's written in your law. How do you interpret it? He said that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and that you love your neighbors as you do yourself. Uh, Peterson translates it this way, his paraphrase, that you love God with all your, your passion and prayer mm. and muscle mm. and intelligence, mm. and that you love your neighbor as well as you do yourself. Say that again. That was good. Yeah. That you love the Lord your God with all your passion, mm -hmm. he calls that heart, right. prayer, mm -hmm. that's soul, mm -hmm. muscle, mm -hmm. that's strength, mm -hmm. and intelligence, that's the mind. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Michael Card has his, in this commentary on Mark, and excuse me, Luke, he has this heading called A Parable of Unexpected Mercy. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that unexpected mercy comes now. Good answer, he said to the, to the scribe, to the uh, religious authority. Do it and you'll live. Mm -hmm. I think what he's talking about, if you do this, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself, you will live a fulfilling and, and fruitful life here, and you will live on the other side. And you will love your neighbor. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. But you love God because he's loved you first. Right. And in this incredible, what I would call Hesed love, mm -hmm. or we'll get to that in a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the Hesed love of God and the Hesed love we're to show. So looking for a good answer, he said, do it and you'll live. Looking for a loophole, he asked, and just how would you define Neighbor, you can almost hear his voice yes. getting very sly. Just yes. him rubbing his hand. Just or, how would you define neighbor? You know, it's sort of a Pepe Le Pew. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> how would you define neighbor? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. Uh, I don't see a Pepe Le Pew in there. No. Jesus answered by telling a story. There once was a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. Okay, let's stop there for a moment. Mm. Jerusalem to Jericho was about 20 miles. Jerusalem was about 2,300 in elevation, okay, feet. Jericho was 1,300 feet below sea level. So you're talking about a drop of 3,600 feet. And, whoa, whoa, it's more than just a drop. Because I've ridden that yeah. on the bus. Yeah. We did this. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a drop that looks like this. Yeah. It's treacherous drop. Uh, you, the bus is going like this, and you see what, what, and it was prone to robbers. Right. They would hide out. Mm -hmm. and it was prone to robbers. It even had the nickname the Bloody Way. The Bloody Way. And the reason is, is that, uh, see, Jericho was the city of priests. That was mm -hmm. its nickname. Mm -hmm. And so when priests were doing... Uh, their functions, their ceremonial duties there in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. they would come home, okay, to, uh, uh, to Jericho. Uh, the problem here, and, and this is set up by Jesus, is it was very common knowledge. You didn't go along the bloody way by yourself. Okay, you're setting yourself up. If you go by yourself, you're in a whole world of hurt. Mm -hmm. You're in a heap of trouble. When Janie and I, uh, newly married at seminary in Philadelphia, <clears throat> 1975, we went to 10th Presbyterian when we could, evening service. It was a Sunday night in the summer, and I didn't know the way to get back to where we were in Northeast Philly. And we had our blue hatchback Nova. Sweet. <laughs> and so our car, uh, the battery went dead on the corner of South and 16th. I didn't know where we were. I didn't understand the depths and breadths of it. The policeman in a van over his speaker said, do not get out of the car, put it in neutral, tell your wife to get down on the flesh on the, on the floor. And we will, I will push you out while you're in neutral and then we'll get you to Broad. The policeman, when we got to Broad Street and we parked our car, and he said, first, I can't guarantee your car will be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if it is here, it may be missing all four of its tires. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, what, and he excuse the language, he used an mm -hmm. expletive, mm -hmm. what the H were you doing here on South and 16th? Mm -hmm. I told him we're lost. He said, people die here. 
This is what happens. Anyone going from Jerusalem to Jericho does not go by himself. So the man is doing this, all right? He's a, he's a Jew, and, and as it says here, uh, go ahead, Janie, I can tell by your breathing. What's going on? Well, so the, the, all three of them uh, have, taking your point, all three of them, actually four, right? The man who was robbed, the Jew, the, I mean, the, the, the priest, the Levite, and then the Samaritan were, were traveling alone. Yes, it was, so, it was borderline so you, reckless. Okay, so you said you, you never do, but they did. They would go alone, yeah. and you're, you're taking a risk. And, and, and I think that's especially important because everyone knew it was dangerous. And so when a man was robbed, and a man was, he was actually not just robbed, he was stripped and left for dead, um, you know, there, it would have been, it's unthinkable that there was a lack of compassion, particularly from the leaders of, of Israel who knew God's command to not only love him with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength, but also our neighbor as ourself. And um, I think just real, real basic here, um, kind of elementary school, if you will, is that if you just put yourself in someone else's shoes for a moment, uh, regardless of your background and training, if that's you laying on the side of the road, um, wouldn't you want someone to tend to you and keep you alive? I mean, that's just like the most elementary uh, thought. And yet, Jesus was was revealing uh, 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 almost, it's an almost unthinkable, it, it really. I mean, we've laughed a lot, but it's almost unthinkable that the, that the Jew and the Levite, or rather, excuse me, the priest and the Levite would pass by on the other side. It, it's really an unthinkable scenario. And so then along comes a Samaritan. And um, I still have you some have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so the priest comes, he's probably had his duties, at, the, at Jerusalem, and he looks at this body, this mm -hmm. bloody mess. Mm -hmm. He thinks that maybe this person's dead, and if I touch him, I will be, uns I will be ceremonially defiled. Mm -hmm. So he plays it safe. He doesn't even see if he's dead or alive. He goes on the other side of the street. And so sometimes uh, we can hide behind religion. We can hide behind mm -hmm. uh, the whole sense of, uh, I, I don't want to get out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. is the operative phrase. Mm -hmm. The Levite, the priest came from the tribe of Aaron. The Levite, who came from the tribe of Levi, was looking at, there was a common practice by the robbers where they would have one of them pretend they were wounded and they'd be lying on the path on the way to Jericho. So if you came over to help, the other robbers would beat you up and steal all that you had because that one on the ground was bait. It was, it was, it was a disguise. It was just a, a ploy. So this Levite was thinking he was going to play it safe. I don't want to be near if there's some sort of trap here. So he goes on his way. And, and the thing that, that is the stunning reversal is the Samaritans were hated. Uh, the Samaritans uh, came about after they're the half-breeds. Mm -hmm. And after the exile, those Jews, they had relations with pagans. And out of that came the half-breeds. Mm -hmm. And so they saw them as ceremonially unclean. Mm -hmm. They saw them to be hated. And with over time, the hatred only grew towards the Samaritans. By the time Jesus is given this, when he says, okay, uh, he says the religious man showed up, he avoided the injured man, boom. Now we get to verse 33. A Samaritan traveling the road came on him. You can almost hear the music. Dun, dun, dun. In other words, the villain. The villain is coming. Here comes the Samaritan, the half-breed, the hated one. Ones who've been outcasts throughout our life because of their compromise and because of them worshiping another God. But instead, Jesus says, a Samaritan traveling the road came on him, and when he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. 
Jenny used the word compassion. Mm -hmm. You had compassion, you had worship. What was the first word? Humility. Humility, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so his heart went out to him, okay? Though they considered him a, a half-breed, a heretic, uh, a compromiser, and these are to be tossed out of any sort of social interaction, Jesus says his heart went out to him. He gave him the first aid, um, the uh, disinfecting uh, and bandaging his wounds. Then he lifted him onto his donkey and he led him to an inn and made him comfortable. And in the morning, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper saying, take good care of him. If it costs any more, put it on my bill. I'll pay you on my way back. Mm -hmm. What do you think? This is the message. Which of the three became a neighbor to the man attacked by robbers? Mm -hmm. The scribe, the attorney, what did he say? He couldn't stomach it to say the Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And so he says, the one who treated him kindly. Mm -hmm. The one who showed mercy. Mm -hmm. The one who had hesed. Yes, and you know, I don't think we, I think we should clarify, this is not a condemnation of the Jews. Jesus was a Jew. He loved his people so much. Don't hear this. This is about the heart. This is not, um, you know, this, this group of people are better than that group of people. As a matter of fact, that whole way of thinking is the core of prejudice. Um, it is because of this group, uh, this person is bad. And when we take a broad brush and we paint a people based on various assumptions about, about the, the attitudes and the values of those people and we treat everyone with that broad brush of condemnation, that's not Jesus, that's not his point. His point here is the heart, whether it's Jew or Gentile. You see, one of the things we didn't mention is that in Hebrew, neighbor actually does mean someone close by, you know, the person across the street or next door or within your family or a relative within your family. Neighbor does generally mean a person close by, but, but that's not to say that God intended his people to only love those who love them. Did you hear what I just said? Say it again. This does not mean that God only intended us to love those who love us. Quite the opposite. Um, you, you, this scribe, who, who was a technical person, a perfectionist, if you will, a perfectionist of the law. And, and if you took the literal meaning of the word neighbor, he might have been correct. But you see, God is not a literalist. He's not, it's not the, it's, he is uh, very intent on us keeping the law, but we misunderstand the law if we think we're to become perfectionist. What we're to become is to become great lovers, mm -hmm. not great people of the law. This is about overflow from the heart. And the heart of the Samaritan reached out. He really went above and beyond the call of duty. By the way, when we were in Israel, mm -hmm. we went, at the, we traveled that road, mm -hmm. and then we got to the bottom down in the valley where near where Jericho was. We couldn't go in Jericho. Now, it's not a safe place unfortunately, but um, they have their um, uh, built a building that they call the Samaritan's Inn. Hmm. Of course, it isn't the sure. Samaritan's Inn, right. but it was a stopping point for tourists like us right. to stop and to talk about the story of the Good Samaritan and to consider what is God, I just got to chill, what is God saying to us as his people? How are we to treat others if we love the Lord our God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind and all of our strength? We will love not just the person across the street, but all people around the world as we, as we love ourselves. And that's what we've got to be so careful about in these times because there is so much division in our world. It's nation against nation. It's people against uh, tri tribe against tribe. It's, it's 
a community against community. It's polit one political party against another, and it's dividing people. Here in the United States of America, it's never been worse in terms of division. And, you know, Jesus, Jesus calls us to be transcendent. Mm -hmm. Jesus takes us above the fray and says, hold it, hold it, hold it, people. We are to love others as we love ourselves, and we do not take out our big paintbrushes and just slather everyone who disagrees with us politically and to be filled with hate just because of where they stand on an issue. Yeah, neighbor is not uh, delineated by race, okay? Neighbor is not delineated by geography. Neighbor is not delineated by citizenship. Neighbor is because a man or woman is made in the image of God. Amen. And because of that, Jenny used the word transcendent. We transcend the rules, the rituals, the regulations that are in, in social uh, 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 dynamics and go higher and go further up in the area of compassion. I, I found two passages that uh, really are compelling. If you have a, uh, a pen and pad, you might want to write down uh, Romans 12, uh, 9 through 11. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. That's good. Whoa, whoa, that's good. Start that over, sweetheart. Don't just pretend to love others. Mm -hmm. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Mm -hmm. Love each other with genuine affection. Mm -hmm. And take delight in honoring each other. Mm -hmm. Never be lazy, mm. but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. What I love about that is we're to love each other. We can hate what is wrong, yeah. um, it, it, but we we're, that doesn't mean that we therefore um, just, as I've said several times, just take all, all, because someone you think has a different or wrong opinion about something that we hate them. No, we, we, we may dis detect, by the way, that word hate um, is detest. We may detest the thinking. Um, that's okay, but we need to be very careful. It's a fine line. It's a very, it's a slippery slope. We used that word last week, didn't we? It's a slippery slope. We must be careful that we don't let our hearts get hard. Um, Jesus is speaking directly. As a matter of fact, I think it's very interesting that when this scribe quoted correctly the scripture and then Jesus said, good, go and do likewise, you know, and the man could have sat down and the next person rise. Instead, Jesus has to go into the story to reveal the man's heart. But what's interesting is that way he ends it is you go and do likewise. So he, so, so the man had the right idea up here. And a lot of you listening, and all of us, we're all prone to sin. We may have all the right ideas up here, but it's got to translate into our feet, into our life. And that's why Jesus then gets personal with him. You go and do likewise. He was loving the man. He wasn't dismissing the man. He was genuinely trying to show him the error of his ways. Jesus is a master at that. And we need to be open to, and we need to keep, keep our own heart in check with the heart of Christ. The Samaritans saw uh, the beat up corpse, uh, the uh, soon to be uh, corpse, but he had compassion. The word hesed, H-E-S-E-D, it's a Hebrew word, and it means when the person from whom I have a right to expect nothing mm. gives me everything. Mm. The person to whom, when the person from whom I have the right to expect nothing gives me everything. If you notice, he gave everything over and over and over of coming back to check and to pay the bill this is the Lord to us. Mm. He has a Hesed love. Mm. And with that, the, the, the story becomes distasteful to the attorney, mm. to the legal scribe, mm. because why? This goes against, he's wanting, who is my neighbor? He wanted him to say, your fellow Jews. Exactly. That's what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He didn't want him to say a Samaritan or some, some Samaritan helping a Jewish man. Right, right. He didn't want that. That just sort of broke all the icons and, and start to give him a, an incredible 
a feeling of, uh, of, of unrest because now we're, we're, what am I going to hold on to? Instead of holding on to compassion and hesed and the Lord, he, he's been holding on to his rituals and his duties and ceremonial law. Well, that's right. And, and I think that you just said something, and I think it's important to note. We don't know who the man was that's on the side of the road. Jesus didn't say if it was a Jew. He did say. It is Jew. Where does it say that? First verse. It does? Yeah. Did I miss that? Yeah, you missed it. I missed it. That's all right. Huh. We love you. Yes. Well, verse 30. Verse 30. Let's look at that again. I missed it. A man was traveling on a trip. No, it doesn't say, okay, a man was Reply going... with the story. A Jewish man was traveling on a trip. No, 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 no. Oh, no, it just says a man. No, Jewish man. A man. My, my Bible does not say a Jewish man. Well, my Filipino Bible, <laughs> it says a Jewish man. <laughs> okay. I don't know what translation you're okay. using there. It just says a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He doesn't say a Jewish man. Well, the other translations I looked at... NIV, others, they had Jewish. Well, so. I'm not sure. We'll have to look that yeah, up further. Right. Hey, note everybody. To yourself. Note, yes, to note to self. But the point is, is that if it is a Jewish man, that's even more compelling that the Samaritan helped someone who was, quote, unquote, his enemy. Mm. He, he loved him, and he had compassion, and he had hesed. And remember what I said. Hesed is when the person from whom I have a right to expect nothing gives me everything. Well, excuse me, but if it was a Jewish man... Even more compelling that a Samaritan went and took care of him. Right, that's what I just said. Uh, oh, did I hear this? I was thinking about this. I'm, I'm really, I'm really it's okay. pondering. Right. I'm pondering right now. You're very special. Yeah, really. I, I, because in my mind, it was, the man was not delineated. But if it was, we'll check that. Um, then it's it's very it's it's compelling. But the point is, it doesn't matter really. It doesn't matter if it's Jewish or Samaritan or or Indian or um, Hin it doesn't matter. It matters that we care. That's what matters. Right. That's the point. See, Hesed is always something you do, and so in a way, the way Jesus is ending this uh, verse in in the uh, um, parable, he's saying, "Go and do likewise." Yes, now go. And do Hesed. <laughs> go and do Hesed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go and have mercy. Mm -hmm. Go and show forth compassion. Mm -hmm. You know, that the, mm -hmm. the essence of what we're talking about here is that. Uh, last week I talked about mm -hmm. Frederick Beekner. We are sinners infected with a cancer of hard hearted rebellion. Mm -hmm. I think this brings out this hard hearted rebellion that comes about by the priest, by the Levite, and, uh, and really in a way the attorney, the scribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the one who shows it in, in radiant colors, in a vibrant way, is, is the Samaritan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, John Piper said, I used this last week also, our view of grace is shallow because we have a, ho a hollow view of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until you can see that just like okay, the priest and Levite, that could be you. Just like the priest and the Levite, uh, you could be looking at somebody on the side of the road and you just not do anything, all right? He's saying, now, acknowledge your sin, acknowledge your darkness, acknowledge the areas of rebellion, the hard-heartedness, the cancer, as Janie talked last Sunday about the disease mm -hmm. that you have, and bring it to Christ, bring it to Him, and ask Him to not only forgive you of your sins and failings, but change you. That's what repentance is about. Mm -hmm. A willingness to turn from sin to God. Mm -hmm. Turning from your ways to God's ways. Mm -hmm. And ask him to change you. Ask him to make you different. James chapter 2 puts it this way. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. Mm -hmm. What's the law that sets you free? Mm -hmm. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. You will be judged by the law that sets you free. Every day, if you want to know how you're doing with Christ, you know, we get on the weight scales to see how we're doing. Uh, some on daily basis, some morning and night, whatever be the case. You get on the scales, you see how you're doing. You want to know how you're doing? Just take that statement Jesus said, that the, actually the attorney said to, to Jesus, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Use that. 
How, how are you doing? How are you putting a smile on his face? How are you being able to acknowledge him in your day? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You get disturbed by television, by the news, by all this and that. Well, turn it off. If it's disrupting your relationship with God. Yeah, turn it off. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And if you, if you can't turn it off, then turn down the volume. You know, just or watch, watch less. Yeah, watch, watch less. Watch the picture. Or even have it on mute and then pray. <laughs> pray for our world. Pray for Amen. the news. That, that moment in time. If, saying, hey, your kingdom come, your will be done. Yes. Get Jesus sitting with you. Yes. You don't have to get all riled up and get all fiery and, you know, upsetting others around you. You don't have to do that. What you have to do is just simply say, well, I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Well, I love my neighbor as myself. And, if I can finish. Yes, sorry. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. Mm -hmm. There you go. Verse 12, chapter 2. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. Mm -hmm. But if you've been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Mm -hmm. Powerful. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Mm -hmm. Can that kind of faith save anyone? Mm -hmm. Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? Mm -hmm. So you see, faith by itself isn't good mm -hmm. unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Wow, powerful. And th those are words that we are familiar with uh, if you are a Christ follower and if you ha know the word. Um, and it's so appropriate with the parable of, of the Good Samaritan. I think if we could take a moment and discuss the word compassion. Well, before we do, I, I really think that the importance of the 20-mile journey that Jesus was having, he was uh, telling, that he, the, the priest had an opportunity. He, he thought, the priest could have thought that the, uh, that the Samaritan, uh, if asked, he thought the Samaritan wasted time and money and effort. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. The Levite could have said the same. Look at what he wasted. Mm -hmm. No, he invested Hesed. He showed grace and mercy and compassion and kindness. And guess what? The path to Jerusalem, to Jericho, mm -hmm. you don't know what's coming. When you get in your car each day, you don't know what's coming. Mm -hmm. When you, your day is like the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. You don't know what's coming. And you can see something that involves the love of Christ and tender mercies and overflowing care. And you can walk on the other side of the street. Or in that day, you can do something gracious and generous and kind and tender and compassionate. Yes, yeah, so the word compassion means to come alongside. Um, it's, it's more than that, though. It's to be deeply moved in spirit. Um, the word is a powerful word. It's the same word that, that Jesus, it's, we often see it in, in relation to Jesus' healing. It would say that he was moved with compassion and he touched the eyes and healed or he raised from the dead. Compassion, don't think we're talking here about weakness or you know, namby-pamby love. We're talking about strength. Um, the compassion is, a, is the power of God at work. In fact, Jesus, it said, saw the crowds and they looked to him like sheep harassed without a shepherd. And, and so he had compassion on them and preached and taught the word to them. So it's not, by the way, compassion of God is not just um, taking care of the wounded or feeding the sick. You can show your compassion by the way you reach out and help someone understand who God is, understand what it means to be in the kingdom of God. You see, compassion, anything that moves a person closer to wholeness of body, mind, or spirit, if you, it, God will move us differently uh, according to our different gifts. But whatever 
God, in whatever way God works in you to move his grace, move with it. Move with it. That's God in you, making this world a better place by, by the words that are taught, by the deeds that are, uh, that are performed. So it's a, it's a both and, and we see that with Jesus. He, you know, he, he focused on helping people to know what it is to enter the kingdom of God. In some ways, this parable is, has a similarity to the father waiting for his younger son. And the overflowing uh, message of compassion. Mm -hmm. that he had a heart for his son. And really it all starts with the heart. For anything to, to be a motivation, you have to be not so much in a volitional and not so much in an intellectual way. You've got to go 18 inches mm -hmm. down to the heart. Mm -hmm. And you've got to ask the Lord to give you a new heart. You've got to ask the Lord to give you new eyes to see people around you. I don't know if you realize this, but every time you go to the grocery store, there's an opportunity for you to show the love of Christ. doesn't mean you have to hand out Jesus tracts. doesn't mean you have to uh, sort of read from the Bible while you're waiting in line. But by your grace and kindness and patience and, and, and the sweetness in your eyes, people can tell in the eyes when there's warmth and kindness and sweetness. They can. And when there's that type of radiance, We've talked about preach Christ, if necessary, use words. Well, the Samaritan did what he could to embody the life of Christ. And I believe the waiting father showed to his son with the robe, the ring, and the sandals, and the feast, the incredible sense of, again, compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says the father ran to him um, and threw his arms around the son with great compassion. Yeah, it, it's it's a powerful word. And if you're you're thinking to yourself, my heart is cold, um, or my heart is lukewarm. How do I get warmed up? How do I have that that flame within me? All that we can say to you, and because we know it firsthand, is the closer you move towards the flame of the love of God, the more grace you drink, the more the light of Christ comes into you, the more it will come out. It's, it's what we feed. I just recently did a message, actually, the Garden Devotional. Um, what we feed, we breed. What we, what we're, what we eat, we, we and digest is what will come out of our mouth. Um, it's, it's, it's from the the heart that the mouth speaks. So your heart needs to be warmed by the love of God. And maybe right now, some of you just, uh, you just feel like I don't, I'm, I don't have time to bother with other people. I've got problems of my own. Which is said by the priest and the Levite. Exactly. I don't have time for I this. I don't have time for this. It's his own fault. Exactly. Anyway. A poor guy. He should have known to take a friend along. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, we all can get lethargic and we can all get complacent. And this is just a heads up. This is a reminder from Jesus to all of us that we're, God is watching um, he knows if we know we only know his word up here and not in here and not in our feet and and he's sad he wants us he again he wasn't trying to nail the scribe he's trying to instruct the scribe and he's saying to him now go you and do likewise but you know this man this scribe had gotten the privilege of looking into, oh my gosh, it makes me want to cry. This scribe had, had had the privilege of looking into the face of Christ. Oh my goodness, can you imagine? Just, just having the privilege of having the Lord Jesus Christ look you in the eyes and speak to you about what is true. Was it anger? No. It, it wasn't is, disgust. It's life-changing, friends. Mm, yeah. It's life-changing. Yeah. And if you and I can sit with Jesus every day and let him look us deep into the eyes and, and correct our thinking with love and grace, that hesed that Don was talking about, it is a love that no human can fully give us. If you're looking around for, for your husband or your wife or your children or your neighbors to give you hesed, you're looking in the wrong place. Jesus. Look in the face of Christ. It is radiant with grace 
and he wants you to be rightly aligned with the heart of Abba Daddy. And if you have a heart that wants to give and you have very little discretionary time, there, there's things that just ask the Lord, mm -hmm. say, Lord, guide me. You know mm -hmm. my, my threefold prayer, Father, 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 mm -hmm. help me, Jesus. Thirdly, Spirit, come close. Mm -hmm. You pray that regularly and ask the Lord, guide me, direct me. I want to do something. I don't know what I can do with so limited time. Or resources. Yeah, or resources. On the other hand, if you're at a place where you have discretionary time and you have uh, the resources, then ask the Lord to specifically direct you to whether it be Salvation Army, whether it be other places that are Christ-centered and that you can can contribute money, time, uh, once a week, once every two weeks, whatever it is. But that way, God can change the direction of a moving car. Mm -hmm. He cannot do anything with a parked car. Mm -hmm. If the car is in park, God can't do squat with it. Okay, squat is a biblical word. <laughs> but he, if, if the car is moving, God can direct it and redirect it to left and right. But say, hey, I want to make my final years, my time here on earth, I want to make it count. And I don't want to be so self-absorbed, and I don't want to be so, as you mentioned, lazy and lethargic and, and, and cynical. I, I, I want to be one who's looking, uh, you know, I can either, as, as uh, said by Lincoln, mm -hmm. I can either curse the darkness or light a candle. Mm -hmm. Lincoln also said, it takes a lot of strength to be gentle. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of strength to be gentle. Mm -hmm. R.C. Sproul said these words, Not only is the sin of man imputed to Christ, but the righteousness of Christ is transferred to us, to our account. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying that is, I, we don't know the dynamics of the Samaritan, but there's something that was going on on the inside, mm -hmm. something that, it all starts with the heart, and there was mm -hmm. something in his heart mm -hmm. that, caught, that compelled him, that moved him, that, that where he was proactive and directed and intentional mm -hmm. in his love and affection and hesed for, for the uh, Jewish man. Or whatever. <laughs> okay. But here's what Sproul says. It is not simply that Jesus pays our debts for us by dying on the cross. His life is as important to us as his death. Not only does Christ take our sins, our debts, and our wrongdoings, but he also gives us his obedience, his character, and his heart. Mm, that is the only way an unjust person can ever stand in the presence of a just person holy, and wise God. Mm, read that again. That's very good. It is not simply that Jesus pays our debts for us by dying on the cross. His life is as important to us as his death. Mm. Not only does Christ take our sins, our debts, and our wrongdoings, but he also gives us his obedience, his character, his heart. Mm. That is the only way an unjust person can ever stand mm. in the presence of a just, mm. holy, and wise God. That's beautiful. See, he, he's talking about, the, yes, the death of Christ, we get his righteousness, he gets our sins, the transfer, okay? We get the robes of righteousness once we were naked and we were impoverished and uh, we were filled with pride and, and rebellion. But he's also talking about the life of Christ, mm -hmm. that he takes our sins, yes, but he gives us his obedience, his character, his heart. That's what Obedience, you asked for. Obedience, character, and heart. Just say, God. Lord, I want your heart. Mm -hmm. I want your heart in this. Mm. And, um, and you also pray for the Holy Spirit to fill your soul with his, with the wind, with his, his power and his wind. It's pneuma, which is uh, the power of the Spirit. I read something very interesting that being dead in our sins, if, if you think of it as a, as a deflated balloon, within the soul that needs the, 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 the power, it needs to be inflated, inflated by the spirit. Maybe, maybe you say, well, that's my problem. There's something that's deflated inside of me and I need it inflated. You need the inflation of the spirit of God. Perhaps that's what you're thinking right now. And if that's it, hey, good stuff good stuff because God delights to do that. He will inflate that deflated balloon within you. He will empower you to have his heart, to have his obedience, to have his own righteousness, which seems impossible, but it's a slow but sure growth in grace that begins with the spirit 
inflating your deflated balloon. Um, the visual is very powerful, and perhaps that's what you need to pray for, my friends. When uh, R.C. Sproul and Vesta used to live outside of uh, Pittsburgh, and they started the Ligonier Study Center, she said this humorous story. They had two German Shepherd dogs, mm -hmm. and R.C. wanted to name them <clears throat> uh, Hosanna and Hallelujah. And so whenever they get lost in the woods, because there's a lot of land there, He'd be calling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> and she said the neighbors thought they were charismatics or something. But I thought, what a, what a unique way of getting yourself focused because he would take long walks with Hosanna and hallelujah. And when he would write, and it's uh, many of the books he did, he would have Hosanna and hallelujah. Well, and we, need, we all need Hosanna and hallelujah. That's right. So let's, Last quote for let's... you. In the deepest sense, by Dallas Willard, Love is not something you do. Mm. It is something you become. Mm. A loving person. Mm. In the deepest sense, love is not something you do. Mm. It's something you become. Mm. A loving person. Mm. Father, we, um, we come to you knowing um, that we are needy people. Some who are listening have recognized their, there's something deflated in their soul and they need the power of your holy spirit so come holy spirit and and breathe into your people into all of those who call out to you now i need you father god i need you to breathe into me i need the spirit pour your life your righteousness, your heart into my soul so that I will think as you think. I will see others as you see them. I will have love operating and compassion operating within me. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you for Jesus that he cleanses me so that the Holy Spirit can enter. Father, I pray that anyone who needs the life of the Spirit within them, your Spirit, may they just pray this simple prayer, Abba, Father, I need you. Forgive me for my sins. Enter my body and inflate your Spirit within me so that I might see as you see, that I might walk as you walk, that I might have your priorities have mercy on me, Holy Father. I thank you for hearing the cries and the prayers of those around the world who, who may not have understood all that we've said. Maybe, maybe, maybe only one or two things really hit home. And if whatever that was, Lord, I pray that you would bring them into your arms and love, love, love everyone listening right now. So much love that that love will overflow through them to, to this world. Thank you, Father, that your light and your love is more powerful than all the darkness. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray that men and women would be stirred up to, to pray and ask you for your heart. Mm -hmm. I pray that they would be able to say, Lord, touch my eyes so that I can see mm -hmm. what you see. Touch my life so that I can become an ambassador of grace and mercy and hesed. If you would have the courage to pray that, Lord, show me your heart for me. You created me. You designed me. You've had your hand on my head of blessing for all these years. Now, in these remaining years that I have here on earth, I want to make them count no matter what. So take that threefold prayer, pretty simple. Father, 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 mm. help me, Jesus. Mm. Spirit, come close. And as Janie said, you will breathe on them, you will embrace them, and you will guide and direct them. You will, Lord. That's the way you work. Mm. You're astonishing. And with a stunning reversal like this, how can we lose? How can we ever lose? Mm. Because you have the last word. Mm. 
Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Father, we give you all the glory, for you are the beautiful, glorious Lord and Master of this entire world. To you be the glory, Father. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling away and who will bring us with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory power, authority, and dominion belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. All glory to God. Shalom, friends. Mm. Godspeed, my friends. We, Godspeed. We love you, and we pray that you will stay close to Jesus. We look forward to seeing you again, and would you like and share this so others can hear the stunning reversal that Jesus brought onto planet Earth that we should love our neighbors even as we love ourselves. And so, friends, I'll see you hopefully on Wednesday. And if you have missed previous messages and you'd like to hear what's been said um, before, you can go to YouTube to Janie Poet. And there are there's the whole collection of all that we've done uh, if you have any desire to hear more. We love you and stay close to Jesus. And as it said, the Trinitarian to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay, goodbye for now.